afternoon, everybody. Sorry to be a little late. Um, all these new Facebook things you've got to upload and update your things. So I am Pat Cameron. I am happy to be with you today on Wellness Wednesday. And I want to take this opportunity to really sort of, you know, just really, I don't want to say gloss over because I don't want to diminish the importance of this, but to really just provide an overview on emergency preparedness. Um, We've looked back over time, we had 9-11, and there was a big concerted effort to do emergency preparedness then um, after Hurricane Katrina, another time when you know natural disasters hit and we think, oh my gosh, do I have things in place? Um, and the same could be said for right now in this COVID um, pandemic. And you know, and so are we, do we have things prepared for our loved ones with disabilities? And we can look at this from several vantage points. We can look at it from the um, perspective of what happens if I get sick and I need to be hospitalized, who will be there to care for my loved one? Um, and then conversely, if my loved one got sick and is hospitalized, with the pandemic and the limit on visitations, what do I have to put in place beforehand? How can I be best prepared for that in communicating the importance that I'd be there to help her communicate or help communicate on her behalf. Um, so there's so much that can be done ahead of time. Thus, it's called preparedness. Um, and so there are resources on the Family Ties website, um, www.massfamilyties.org. And it's M-A-S-S -S for mass, not M-A. Um, and you, know, you can go on there, click the learn button all the way over to the far right and you'll get the drop-down menu and emergency preparedness is there. There are several forms that you can fill out ahead of time just to be ready. There's a form that you can fill out and, you know, again, in this atmosphere of being prepared, that you can um, drop off with all of your first responders in town so that they know that if an emergency hits, um, who your family member is, how best to communicate with them, and all of the important medications and, you know, and, and information that's available. As you may know, Family Ties is a partnership with the uh, Department of Public Health, and we have the true benefit of accessing information um, from the department as well. And the department has just updated these handy dandy, well, that's a little glare there, um, forms that you can have available. This one goes right on your refrigerator, and it literally is a form that you can fill out. First responders are trained to look for this when they go into your home. And so it's important that you fill this information out um, about medications, contact information, um, and so forth. It's literally, let me get it out here. Not very long at all both sides, allergies, medications, medical conditions, and so forth. Um, so that in the event that you have to be evacuated and they, your loved one goes to the hospital, you, God forbid, get separated, um, all of that information is there that the first responder can look at. It has a magnetic strip, can go right on your refrigerator. Um, these are available free of charge. Um, you can email me at pcameron. C-A-M-E-R-O-N at FCSN.org, and I will be able to send them to you. There are wallet size ones that are intended to go in your uh, loved one's backpack or handbag, um, and but you can carry one in your um, on your person as well. So one for the home, one for your bag. Um, we just received a, a shipment of these, and so we have plenty to distribute. So I hope that you will look at that. The other resource that I want to make you aware of is on mass.gov and then slash uh, no plan prepare and then a dash in between those words. So mass.gov no dash plan dash prepare also has a wealth of information there that you can use to help build your emergency preparedness plan. And again, it's about being informed um, of helping inform those first responders who may have to come in and help evacuate. Um, 
also a good uh, record to have with you and keep it updated so that you can start this preparedness. Um, and again, as I mentioned, you know, should the situation come up that either you or your loved one is hospitalized, you want to make sure that, you know, you've already been in communication with your community hospital if that's where you should be going. Um, and, you know, and have something on file there that, um, you know, demonstrates that you have healthcare proxy over your loved one or guardianship, whatever, um, you know, methods you are, you're using um, that spells out all of um, your loved one's um, behaviors, communication, styles of communication, medications, um, whatever anxiety or, um, you know, uh, conditions they may have, um, so that all of that is on file and that you put in writing and have a hospital administrator sign off on it, um, that you have permission to be there with them. Um, this is essential. It's essential, particularly when your loved one is over 18 um, and is not no longer considered a child. And so you really want to have that ahead of time. Um, all of these uh, plans and uh, resources are evolving in this COVID-19 age. And so, you know, what I'm sharing with you today is what's known today. So, you know, be keeping an eye out on both um, the Federation's website, Family Ties website, and of course, mass.gov um, for further um, information. Um, it really is important that you think ahead, that you plan for, um, you know, these unfortunate circumstances and use the resources that are available. So again, have these available. Email me at pcameron at fcsn.org and I'm happy to mail these out for you. All right, everybody, be well and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.